Beauty isn't all about a luscious set of lips or rock hard abs. Your brain looks for more subtle clues that indicate whether a person is healthy. Right, external beauty is only part of the whole picture. Even before MRIs and blood tests, our brains could sense authentic beauty in a fraction of a second. Because authentic beauty reflects health. Our new book will not only help you look your best, but also feel your best. Because when you feel good, you look good. It's all part of you being beautiful, inside and out. Hi, I'm Dr. Mehmet Oz. And I'm Dr. Mike Royzen. Let's take a deeper look into the emotional roller coaster you or your friends may be riding to identify those feelings that can make you feel off in life. The biology of depression involves your neurological gatekeeper. It's the amygdala, and it takes all the information coming to your brain, and it pushes it to the cortex, the part of your brain that helps you make decisions, like running out of a burning home. It's the amygdala that assigns meaning to that smoke alarm, so you actually jump when you hear it. Now here's where the beautiful biology shines through. The amygdala recognizes that there might be an emergency. The cortex decides what to do about it. The cortex is the rational part of the brain. The amygdala is the emotional part. The amygdala controls fear and anxiety, and, and, and which are at the root of so many of our emotional disorders. While the amygdala can send lots of messages to the cortex, Remember this, the cortex can't do as much in return. In fact, in adults, the amygdala has 10 times more neurons headed up to the cortex than it receives from the cortex. So we can't just will ourselves to be calm just because we want to. But what we can do is to understand a little more about how these emotional disorders work and learn ways to flip the switch so that you can reduce the fear and anxiety that can cause depression. Now remember, that clinical depression is not a momentary sadness. It's a persistent feeling of despair triggered by an imbalance of chemicals in your brain. That's right, it's a physical disease and one with potentially lethal outcomes. From the ages of 15 to 44, suicide is one of the top four killers of Americans. While the elderly overall are less depressed than their younger counterparts, white men over the age of 65 have a suicide rate five times higher than that of the general population. Women try more often, but men succeed more often. In addition, depression suppresses your immune responses, so you're more vulnerable to infections. It also increases inflammation in your body, so your C-reactive protein, or CRP levels, which is a marker of the, some of the most important inflammation in the body, more than double, and your heart attack rates increase. So, how do you tell if you're depressed? Walk into a room. Is the mood of the people in the room better or worse after you've been there for a short time? If it's worse, it's a sure sign that you're projecting some depressive symptoms. Doctors can often diagnose depression because they themselves feel worse after talking to a patient. Here's a stunning stat for the day. About 15% of us have clinically significant depression at some time in our lives. Sometimes you might need medication, but it's essential that you also get psychological support at the same time since much of the benefit comes from talking out the problem. Otherwise, you're just dulling the pain with medication without addressing the underlying causing problems. Sometimes your doc may even prescribe medication based on symptoms alone. Or she may do further testing, like blood tests to ensure that you're not short on normal quantities of thyroid hormone or B12, which are linked to depression. Here are a couple tips. Talk it out. The fact is that when it comes to reducing the effects of depression, the biggest cure may not be in a pill bottle, but making sure you don't stay bottled up inside yourself. In treating minor depression, talk therapy over six weeks is 60 to 70% successful, and it's 90% successful when used in conjunction with drugs. How does it work? Probably through release of those feel-good chemicals, including oxytocin, and learning new coping strategies. Maybe the most effective treatment for depression is cognitive behavior therapy. Limited to 10 to 20 sessions, this therapy helps people learn how their thoughts contribute to their symptoms and it suggests behavioral changes that they can make to change their environment, their response to their environment, and ultimately their thoughts. It doesn't tell you how you feel, but rather it teaches you how to stay calm and cool when you're upset about a problem so that you can figure out how to feel and do things better. We also want you to go bananas. Eating a banana every day facilitates both crosstalk among your brain cells 
and the effect of certain neurotransmitters like serotonin and its precursors. These two effects may mean that eating a banana a day helps keep the therapist away. Plus, besides coffee, bananas are our largest source of antioxidants. Three, see the light. People who get seasonal affective disorder have been shown to feel better when they're exposed to bright lights, especially rated UV lights for the home for 20 minutes a day. Any bright light will serve the purpose, and halogen lights emit the same frequency as those made to treat seasonal affective disorder or SAD. Right at bedtime. Approach every day with an attitude of thankfulness. Impossible expectations lead to sadness. Try to write a gratitude journal daily. Writing three thank you notes a day really does make it less likely that you will suffer from depression. And while you're at it, put some music on in the background. Research suggests that music can improve moderately depressed moods. Depression has a silver lining and makes you focus on the challenges of life so you keep talking to anyone who will listen, including yourself.